Hello and welcome to the big picture. Uttar Pradesh is again on the boil. This time it is the western Uttar Pradesh where the criminal situation has turned for the worse with over 30 reportedly killed in the last few days. In the last one year over 30 incidents of criminal violence has racked the state. With elections to the Lok Sabha fast approaching, the tense criminal situation is causing a lot of concern. Uttar Pradesh has always seen communal violence periodically. Why is Uttar Pradesh becoming a communal cauldron again? Is it linked to the electoral mobilization? Why do the authorities in Uttar Pradesh repeatedly fail in controlling the situation before it goes out of control? What are the reasons behind Western Uttar Pradesh also presently facing such a situation? We will discuss all this today with Sompal Shastri, former Union Minister and once an MP from the region, Prakash Singh, former Director General of Police, Uttar Pradesh, Professor Zoya Hassan, political scientist and author, and on the phone line from Lucknow is Dilip Avasti, news editor of the Times of India. Welcome to all of you. Mr. Prakash Singh, I'd like to come to you first. Do you see some kind of a pattern in this kind of communal situation, the communal riots which occur in Uttar Pradesh? Yes, You I have do. been there, you have been mm -hmm. observing these things. Do you see a pattern? Yes, I do see a pattern because ever since this government has been voted to power and they have uh, assumed the reins, uh, there has been sudden uh, spurt in communal incidents, something which was not there during the not-so-glorious regime of Mayavati. Right. Uh, I mean, with all her faults, at least on this front, uh, she kept things quiet right. and normal. But uh, suddenly, uh, we find uh, that this kind of thing has happened. And uh, if we trace the origin of it, I mean, soon after the installation of this government, I, I recall they were uh, in the cities of Lucknow and Allahabad. There were demonstrations by the so-called minority communities and they virtually held the city to ransom right. and the police were paralyzed. They just did not swing into action. That was the first shock with the people of UP got after this government came to power. But I think subsequently the government uh, realized that no, this kind of thing cannot be permitted and uh, law and order needs better management. So they uh, made changes in the police hierarchy. A competent officer, Arun Kumar, was made in charge of law and order. And since then there has been a gradual improvement. But nevertheless, that trend continues. And uh, even according to official estimates uh, given by the government of Uttar Pradesh, there were uh, 27 incidents uh, in the year 2012. And there were 12 incidents till August 15 this year, which makes a total of 39 till the 15th of August. Right. According to Times of India, there have been 50 incidents so far and uh, about 46 people have been killed. So, I mean, the picture is pretty bad. Right. And uh, small incidents, major incidents, incidents of communal tension have been happening across the state. Right. And I think uh, the, the basic reason for this is, uh, I, mean, I mean, a certain community has got this feeling that uh, they are, they can do things and get away. Uh, and this feeling has given rise to a, a, an aggressive pattern of behavior, which we are unfortunately seeing, uh, an intolerant uh, behavior, uh, which uh, has been witnessed in Bareilly and other places. And uh, this is bound to result in some kind of reaction. Okay. Bound to result in some kind of reaction. And uh, I wrote long ago that uh, a bigger conflagration is, is just waiting to happen. And this has happened in uh, where that would happen, of course, nobody could uh, force me, I could, nor could I. And uh, so this has happened in Muzaffarnagar. It was a trivial incident. It, it was, was a, a trivial incident. A trivial incident, but which, see, which must be once, happening all once, the time everywhere. You see, once feelings are charged, then uh, all you need is a trigger. Yes. Uh, a small spark is enough to set the prairie fire. And that is what has happened in Muzaffarnagar. Okay, Mr. Mr. Sompal, you, you, you hail from the region where this major trouble is happening now. Western Uttar Pradesh, you know, we will talk about what Mr. Prakash Singh's, Prakash Singh's observation is very important, what he said just now. But, you know, Western Uttar Pradesh, we, have, we haven't heard of this kind of conflagration for quite some time now. Why is it happening yes, now? Yes, then? you see, for quite some time is uh, all right. right. And this for quite some time obviously includes the previous regimes of the Samajwati government right. headed by Mulayam Singh yes. Yadav. So saying that it is uh, it is coinciding as a pattern with the regime of Mulayam Singh, mm. here I don't agree you with don't Mr. Agree. Prakash Singh. Okay. Because earlier regime of SP uh, party and headed by Mulayam Singh, I repeat, uh, did not witness such things. But this in, time, in, yes. You, you did not witness such things in this area or entire Uttar Pradesh? Uh, no, in this area I'm talking. Okay. I, I'm not privy to the things that okay. are there in the other parts. But since I hail from West UP and I belong to the ground, I'm a 
practical uh, political person. But in one respect, I agree with him that this buildup was being observed by us for mm. several months. And this buildup this time has been on the, from the other side. The feelings of the majority community are being pent up obviously for political gains. And we were apprehending this to happen any day. And I agree with him that this was a trivial incident. Mm. And both the communities were involved. I'm not naming them, obviously, because we should not add uh, fuel to the fire. So obviously, I should not name the communities. So this was a simple incident of crime which could have been tackled and was being tackled by the administration rightly. But it was given color of communal um, strife by the interested parties. And then the, the, the whole uh, one community rose, not all the Hindus. Again, it has to be underlined, only one community. Yes. And the dominant, and, and the, and and who dominant, are the, who are the dominant the, community there? Yes. And who are the obvious gainers in this? The one reason is that this community, which has been in the forefront of all political campaigns earlier, including the Kisan Union campaign and so on, farmers uh, yes. campaign, but all communities would come together. You see, if you go back to history, Great Chaudhary Charan Singh had forged an alliance of all the peasants, right. Muslims included. Right. We are convert Rajputs, convert Jats, convert Tyagis, who are known as Maheshraj, Rangards, and uh, Mulajats, and also convert Sainis, and also convert Gujars, Polas. They were together as peasantry, and there were times when this particular dominant community, Jats, had three to four MLAs from Mujafanagar, while they are only 12% of the whole district. Right. Muslims are 30%. So there was complete harmony, which has deliberately been missed because the leadership has failed to canalize the energies of this community who are always very, very conscious and aware of the political movement. So you're talking, you're saying that the, these communities, the Hindu communities, which were, you know, united at, at once upon a time. Not they united. Been... They, are, they are only only one single community is in the forefront. This now, is to be. Yes, now. yes. No, earlier, I'm talking about no. when you're talking about Chaudhary Charan Singh. Not, not, not that... Hindu community. Not all Muslims and Hindus. All were, all, were all together. All together, And yes. now they've been broken up. Because earlier the violence had never reached the rural area. Right. The, the distinct uh, difference this time in the pattern is that the violence has erupted in the rural area. Right. First. Rural areas in West UP have always been untouched by violence. It was confined to the districts of Meerut and no, the cities of Meerut and Mujafanagar. You may go back to the days of Khalapar firing and those things during emergency and those. And, and then, then Mulayam Singh was not there. Why did it happen? But this time the dif distinction is that it has started in the rural areas right. which were living together in complete peace. And the flare-up has been built up, I have definite information, by a political party who is interested in uh, so mobilizing. So you are saying that this is part of political mobilization? Definitely. And it is connected to the forthcoming elections? Definitely. Mr. Mr. Prakash Singh? Well, I am not privy to this kind of information and to the best of my knowledge, uh, during my successive visits to Lucknow, yes. and when I try to sort of uh, be abreast of whatever is happening across the state, uh, I was not uh, told about this thing. I mean, this is news to me. Okay. Um, but of course, he knows Western UP better than I do. Uh, let me go to uh, Zoya. Pro, uh, Professor Zoya, Zoya, is there? Zoya? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. okay, it's very interesting. Yes, uh, I'm here. There, there are two points of view here. One, Mr. Prakash Singh, a very vet veteran police officer. He, is, you know, he, is, he says that, you know, the, 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 the advent of this new government has seen this kind of uh, you know, criminal situation becoming tense in, in, in the entire state because the, the minority community has suddenly, suddenly feels empowered and, you know, it is, it, is, it is showing, it's flexing its muscles. Whereas Mr. Uh, Sompal, Sompal feels that, you know, in the last several months, the, they have noticed that you know, there's been some kind of a political mobilization happening from a particular political party. Well, uh, it is true that uh, over the past uh, year or so, there's been a spike in uh, incidents of communal violence. Right. However, this government came to power about two years ago, and the run-up to the 2014 elections had started uh, not in the last few months, but in the last two years. And it's very clear that there has been a politics of polarization. 
and this politics of polarization is is in a way an attempt to polarize the uh, and work on hindu muslim divisions and i think the bjp and the sang parivar from all reports uh, is in the forefront of working on hindu muslim divisions the appointment of amit shah as the bjp is in charge of the uh, political uh, campaign in up and he got down to work immediately the, um, among the first uh, statements that he made after his appointment was uh, the focus on ayodhya the revival of the temple issue uh, now why have they done that that's largely because over the last 20 years up politics has been dominated by caste politics right. which left very little scope for Uh, communal politics for hindutva politics the only way that the bjp can regain ground in up is to pit community against caste now that is what they have been doing and it is very clear from all reports uh, that have appeared both in the print media as well as in the electronic media that uh, the sang parivar the bjp and the bjp have been working overtime along with possibly the kisan organizations such as the bku the maha panchayat that was organized over the last two uh, days inflammatory speeches were made over there and also let us not forget that this communal violence is happening in the age of social media and in the age of smss right. uh, again it seems a fake video right. uh, has been uh, widely circulated to create communal polarization now who stands to gain from this polarization I think the party which stands to gain the most from communal polarization uh, is uh, the BJP because I think what the BJP wants to uh, to prevent is strategic voting by Muslims uh, to defeat uh, the BJP which is what had reduced the BJP in 2009 parliamentary elections to 10 seats now it can only climb up to let us say 25 or 30 or 35 seats Uh, by creating a communal polarization let us not forget that there is a history of communal polarization no, in up absolutely. and the situation today is very reminiscent of what happened in the 1990s when communal polarization in central up in the awadh region and in western up where muslims constitute a significant minority helped the, uh, catapulted the bjp to power in up and up was the pathway but, to power at the center okay so yeah, but you know one thing i i want i i want uh, to ask you you say that you know this may be an attempt for uh, communal polarization political polarization and you say that the strategic uh, voting of the muslims to avoid to avoid but how how will that help in fact in, in fact this kind of polarization will only push the muslims further don't you think towards more more and more strategic voting no you see in the past uh, yes i you know girish the point i'm making is that in 2009 i think muslim voting was strate strategic in so far as they would vote for a candidate of any party who could defeat the bjp be that the samajwadi party the bsp or the congress now i think by creating a hindu muslim polarization you are actually in a way uh, compelling muslims Uh, to vote for the samajwadi party and that will in a way send uh, create a polarization and send the majority community uh, towards uh, towards the bjp so that is what i have in mind okay. but i think the bjp is mistaken may i just say just one more point yes. i think the bjp is mistaken because up has come a long way india has come a long way and i think this politics of polarization is unlikely to work simply because dalits and muslim vote i think is going to remain uh, uh, uh divided and spread across uh, across three major parties the congress the samajwadi party and the bsp okay uh the politics of polarization is just not going to work okay dilip can you hear me yeah yeah dilip okay dilip dilip the issue is politics of pol is this what, what we are witnessing a politics of polarization in western up is that part of the political mobilization which is happening or is it just the inefficiency of the of the administration in controlling something like this uh, first of all at least i would like to clarify that i am not with time to think anymore okay sorry i am i am resident as a with uh, dani kadran okay sorry okay yeah yeah uh, no, as far as the violence uh, in uh, west city is concerned 
I, I think definitely it has uh, a political undertones to it. But at the same time, I think it's a major uh, administrative failure. You know, uh, to allow such a huge uh, uh, gathering of people to assemble when, when everybody was talking about uh, this uh, communal uh, hatred, uh, uh, you know, efforts being uh, pushed there for quite some time now. Uh, I think that was one of the major reasons why why this uh, situation uh, took off. And uh, secondly, I think uh, the administration was just not ready to face this kind of a situation in the uh, rural area. Well, uh, there is hardly any policing for that matter in rural uh, rural areas. In the cities, you can manage, but then uh, if you have uh, clashes going down to the uh, lowest uh, level, then then it going to be very, very difficult. And uh, I think we did a story a few days ago uh, saying that, you know, this time the social fabric is very badly hurt. Uh, you know, small incidents are sparking off trouble. Uh, and if, if uh, it happens in the rural areas, it is going to be very difficult to control. Dilip, and that's exactly what has happened. Dilip, Dilip, sorry. Yeah. When you say social fabric has become very, very thin and very, you know, uh, is it is it happening on its own, or is there some forces, you know, working towards creating that kind of a uh, problem within in the social fabric? Uh, look, uh, you know, forces have been working at it since I think 2000. Uh, they have made all efforts, both BJP and the Samajwadi Party, should I say, because these are the biggest gainers out of this. Right. Uh, if, if there is a communal divide, these are the two uh, biggest gainers, uh, uh, at least in UP. Right. So, so uh, attempts have been made by both of them uh, to escalate this kind of tension, uh, but it was not happening, you know. Uh, people were not reacting. People were not uh, coming out to streets and uh, they were not ready to fight. But right. yes, finally, I think they have worked at it brick by brick and now people are, uh, there, there are kind of feelings. Okay. Uh, yeah. Mr. Prakash Singh, you know, this working brick by brick, but there is also a, an element of administration, the failure of the administration. <clears throat> you think in these kind of situations, when, when, when things are building up over a period of time, very and some political parties or political forces very consciously do these things, as uh, Dilip is talking about, where is the where is the role of the police here? Do, are they not? Do they, do they become part of this whole process? I think there was a complete administrative failure in the handling of the situation. You see, this uh, problem started on the 27th of last month. Right. And uh, ten, for 10 days, everyone knew. If we, sitting here in the NCR region, we knew that uh, things are not uh, normal in, in Muzaffarnagar. And uh, yet they allowed the situation to simmer, uh, to simmer and um, ultimately reach uh, an explosive how point. Much, how, much, how, how, much, how much blame would you give to the... The police administration, or the police, and also as well as the, well, the police civil, and the, the district administ administration, and you know, mm. to what extent does the the political <coughs> the political leadership, the the political executive, mm. ha has to be blamed for this? You see, as far as I know, uh, I mean, whatever I have learned, I have not been to the site and I have <coughs> made no personal inquiries. But whatever I have learned, uh, the administration did not take the required action or did not show the uh, degree of firmness which was expected of them because they were being pushed around by the local politicians. Right. Uh, they were just dilly-dallying whether to do this or whether to allow this and allow him to speak, allow this procession to be taken out. They were just being pushed around by the local leaders. They did not show the required degree of firmness. I mean, when the initial incident happened, the eve teasing uh, followed by one set of killing, then another set of killing. If they had really arrested the culprits, the situation would have been nipped in the bud. And the grouse of one community is that uh, the culprits were, are not being arrested and instead our people are being arrested. No, who is right, who is wrong, wrong I do not. In this kind of situation, it's no. very difficult to... Uh, who is right, who is wrong, I do not know. Yes. But the fact of the matter is that there was a general impression that the administration has not been fair, it has not been firm, and it did not take uh, the required... Uh, preventive action and punitive action which should have been taken soon after the incident and uh, over a period of 10 days uh, the, the the incident simmered and ultimately an explosion yeah, yeah, yeah. had to take place. Dilip, Dilip, I, I want to come back to you very quickly. Yeah. You know, the Samajwadi party, one of the theories were, according to Mr. Uh, Prakash Singh, you must have heard what he said. You know, this, this problem, why is it that, you know, ever since the Samajwadi party government has come to power, suddenly the criminal incidents have gone up? 
even the, during the previous government of Mayawati, as Mr. Prakash Singh was pointing out, there were not too many communal incidents. Why is it that Samajwadi Party government create, you know, it's, it's coming into it creates this kind of uh, situation? Uh, you know, Mayawati never ties on uh, uh, communal divides because she, her vote bank is uh, completely different. Uh, here, uh, Samajwadi Party and also the BJP, means in UP, at least they are made for each other. Yeah. Uh, so they, they simply help each other's cause. You know, if you're, you remember 1992, yes. uh, the, the build up to the uh, situation was that like, Muran Singh said, Siri you know, that kind of thing. Right. Now, now he said that to uh, impress the Muslim community, obviously. Right. And that, that uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, led to gains for the BJP. Okay. Uh, okay. So that, that's how it happens. You know, uh, 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 they, they gain out of each other's uh, uh, statement making and, you know, doing and uh, what have you. Okay. Mr. Mr. Yeah. Sompal? You see, you know, going, this, going yes. back to the trivial incident of Eve teasing, let me tell you that if you check the records of the police stations in West UP, and I see it happening almost every day, more than dozens of cases of eve teasing by uh, by the by the misguided youth or the the youth with bad intention or the unemployed ones are so galore in west up so Absolutely. nothing so it's it not, had just really, triggered not. because it was you see no, but having been disturbed to the core by the grand success of samajwadi party at the hustings since the vidhan sabha elections which nobody had predicted the bjp got very upset so they have they have embarked upon an agenda. No, but you know, you, you, you please, uh, I want I want to know from you the social fabric of this region, which you social also fabric. Yes, obviously. How is it got damaged? Social fabric. Is, is it is, it, is it, was it so was it so uh, you know thin that anybody could come probably, and create, probably, the, create the damage? You did not take note of my remark in the earlier uh, statement of mine, the first one. That social fabric has been totally undone in the West UP. Right. There is no community leader of any wisdom left. I therefore cited the name of Chaudhary Chari, right. who had uh, woven right. all this fabric and all peasants belonging to all communities had come together. Otherwise, where is the reason that there would be three to four Jat MLAs in Mujafanar, which has only 12% Jat population? Right. Obviously, with the support of the peasant communities who were Muslims, all the Muslims who are converts from Hindus, including the peasant classes, Rangats, that is Rajputs, Mahesh Raj, that is Tyagis, Polas, that is Gujars, and the Mula Jats, who are the Jats. They were all together. This has been deliberately disturbed. And that kind of leadership, which had fought this socio-economic alliance, has become totally defunct. And therefore, the rural society is rudderless. And I would like to reiterate my position that this time, the violence is afflicting the rural areas exactly. first time and that is a matter of and concern. That's a matter of serious concern. Yes. Okay, but Zoya, this, you know, when, when, when such yes. things happen, when, when, uh, when social fabric gets damaged and, and, and political mobilization and political forces starts using them, where, where are we headed? Well, I think this is very, very unfortunate, uh, but it is particularly unfortunate because I think both BJP and the Samajwadi Party are playing a very cynical game. It's very clear. BJP is to blame for its uh, strategy of polarization. Samajwati is also to blame, and I think uh, one of your panelists very correctly pointed out that uh, the Samajwadi government and administration should have taken preventive measures to stop this because we know from experience of communal violence in different parts of the country that if the uh, state government and the administration has the political will, it can stop communal violence on the, very, on the second day. It does not spread. In this case, it has gone on for three days, which surely uh, indicates laxity on the part of uh, the administration. But I think it, ultimately, uh, I think uh, political parties have to take a mature position that yes, politics is important, political mobilization is important, uh, winning uh, votes uh, and power is important, but not through uh, polarization and violence and not at the cost of human life. 26 human lives have been lost in Western UP. And to, to win power, uh, to win power uh, through death is not something that, uh, that, can, uh, that can be uh, uh, countenanced. Okay. Dilip, 
you know, you, yeah. this, has this realization dawned upon the administration at least now that this is a dangerous game that, <laughs> that is being played? Uh, look, Rogit, there is one an another problem because uh, we don't have people who are experts in handling criminal situations anymore because, you know, we've not had serious riots for so, so, so long. So okay. that's, that's also one reason why they cannot uh, really come to terms with the situation. And as uh, Mr. Prakash Singh was saying, uh, you know, those strict decisions or firm decisions are not being made because, because they don't know what to do. Okay. Most of the administration is absolutely uh, happy when it comes to handling criminal situations. Okay. Yeah. Yes. You see, regarding okay. the, you see, police capability or preparedness or advanced preparedness to stop these things. If you go through the genesis of any, any communal community. violence earlier, has it ever been stopped so quickly? You see, police had already clamped Section 144, the assembly, no, no, no. assembly on 7th was uh, prohibited. And you see, Army this, be, this, 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 this phenomena of lack of police, uh, uh, Girish police Madison personnel. Is the responsibility of a Just government a to stop no, I mean, I'm not saying Zoya. that, uh, I'm, not, I'm not absolving anybody of the responsibility, but the issue is that the lack, uh, the shortage of police personnel and the expertise and so on, which is all pervasive throughout India. Right. Wherever it happens, you cannot post police at every place. The social action also is needed, and there is something at the back of it which has made this built up. And if, if this happens anywhere, why could we not stop all this 84 nonsense which was perpetrated by a particular party sitting in Delhi in the wake of Mrs. Gandhi's murder? And we have seen on the ground, I can tell the names of the people. Hmm. We had gone to okay. the police okay. station. Why was it not so good in Delhi Mr. for several Mr. days? Mr. Prakash Singh, ultimately the, the it's very administration, easy to allege others. administration looks to the signals from the political executive and that is, and that is how or that is why criminal incidents either continues or stops. No, but my, my contention is that the administration does not have to wait for any signals from the political establishment. There, there is a rule of law in the country. Absolutely. Your duty is laid down in the CRPC. Yes. <coughs> Your duty is laid down in the police regulation. If there is a criminal incident, you just go hammer and tongs. But that doesn't seem to be uh, happening. And it doesn't happen because these days they look up to love now. Uh, yeah. Or any, any I'm again headquarters. invoking 84, what happened here? Yes, okay, sir. And was On there a lack note. of signals and communication within the capital of the country? Anyway, sir, I, we are completely run out of time, but the, but the point of the matter is that that the, what is happening in Western Uttar Pradesh, as one of my panelists pointed out, may be a part of a cynical design to, for, of political mobilization, apart from failure of administration and the way it is being handled. But this is something which, which should cause a lot of concern to all of us. And hopefully, the, as Mr. Sompal says, there is there will be some leadership at, at the local level which will be able to control it. But we can't expect that to happen overnight. Thanks to all my guests, Mr. Sompal, Mr. Sompal, Mr. Prakash Singh, Zoya, Professor Zoya Hassan and Dilip Avasti. Please keep watching. We'll come back with another issue Big Picture same time tomorrow.